Ho there, friend. What are you doing out here at this time of day? In a few hours, the Bone Rippers will come out of their caves. And unless you're eager to meet one in person, you should see to it that you're far from here when that happens. <laughs> what? You made it all the way here without ever seeing one of them. Lucky you. They are beasts, as big as trolls and as swift as tigers. They sleep through most of the day, but at dusk they usually come out to look for prey. <laughs> Heard of it? I guess you could say that. Behind these gates is the Valley of Silvergrove, and... Hmm, you know what? Actually, I was just about to close the gate for the night. But if you're looking for our village anyway, why don't you just come in? I won't open them again until tomorrow noon, but that should be enough time for you to finish whatever business you have here. My dame Thalar's banana grog is a blast, if that helps you decide. Uh, is it? I think trust has to start somewhere, doesn't it? And I've got a glad to hear it. Follow me! then, here we are. You'll find our village if you just follow that road down there. At least to the grove. You can hardly miss it. It's a really nice place. I bet you'll like it there. Since that boy found the silver vein in the grove, we live like the light one. When Inadan, really. Walk west.
Mm -hmm. Walk blessed, walk blessed, and welcome to Silent Moon's Inn. You're not from around here, are you? Yes, you're right. I haven't been on the outside for ages. And honestly, I don't plan to change that anytime soon. There's a nice little legend about how it came to be. Care to hear it? All right then. I'm sure you already saw the ancient ruin near the waterfall, didn't you? It is said that once a wealthy couple of Sublime Path lived there. They were tired of the mainland's never-ending troubles and thus moved here, which is an odd choice, especially considering that before the oasis grew, this place was little more than dust and sand. But nevertheless, they did, and they hired the best craftsmen in Doomville to build them a home here. Fruit, bread, and water had to be brought here weekly. Lavish, but it worked. After a couple of years living there, the woman gave birth to a child, Sineri, a healthy boy, young and strong. Only six months after his birth, he already knew how to speak and walk. It all seemed as if the family would lead a happy life there for years to come. But then, something strange happened. The Myrads stopped coming. Days passed, weeks, and finally, moons. No matter how long they waited, they just wouldn't come. And slowly but surely, their provisions would run out. The route to Duneville was far too perilous to be traveled alone, so they were trapped. We will die here, the father said as they sat together one day, he and his wife emaciated and weak, since they saved all the food that was left for their son. Sonari was desperate. He screamed, cried, and asked the gods for help, but he was powerless. One gray, desolate morning, it was over and both his mother and father were dead. Weakened and starving himself, the son then stood in front of his beloved parents' bodies, fell to his knees, and whispered, Why is this happening to me? And he started crying. And then, a miracle happened. As the first tears reached the dusty ground, a flower started sprouting, and only a second later, it was fully grown then grass, and then, just like a flood, a wave of life crashed through the dusty valley, and everywhere wonderful plants and trees came into being. And finally, before the boy had even realized what had happened, a stream of water crashed through the rock. And as Soneri lay there, his body fragile and his eyes wet, he realized what he had done without understanding how. He smiled, closed his eyes, and died. Well, that's it. According to the legend, the grove has been the way it is now ever since then. So, how did you like the story? Corny? Eh, maybe you're right. But it is a folk tale after all. <laughs> Yes, I won't argue with that. The memory seems a little... blurry. Unreal. Huh. But I guess that was due more to the brandy than anything else. Sure do. And you know what? Take this on the house as a welcoming present. It's a handmade... Here it is. The best in the... Walk blessed, walk blessed. Sure do.
No more today. A game. Come on. Reneus has the greatest father in the whole world. Hello. What? Who are you? Can I help you? Foster father. But yes, I am. Why do you ask? Do you know Reneus? Is it? Well then, be my guest. His room is just through that door over there. I think he's reading at the moment, but he always likes company. <laughs> yes, maybe we are. But you know, trust has to start somewhere. And in my experience, it is always rewarded. We have never had any problems with new people in Silver Grove. Hmm, you, but okay, why not? You know, I'm a widower. My companion and I always wanted to have a foster kid before Reneus. But as you said, life here was harsh. Frankly, we barely had enough to eat ourselves. And there weren't exactly a lot of orphans around here to take in either. Well, when my companion died, I was occupied with my thoughts, as you can imagine. Flesh maggots. There was nothing I or the apothecary could do for him. And Reneus appeared out of nowhere discarded like a blunt knife. It was demanding at first, to say the least, especially with his condition. But even then, I never regretted it, not for a second. In any case, I'm glad it all happened like it did. Here in Silver Grove, we are all one big happy family. And every day, I can feel how happy Reneus is. Well, you sure know a lot about my boy, considering that you've never seen him before. But yes, it's true. He's as healthy as a horse, and has been for quite some time now. For some reason, those tumors he had started healing shortly after he arrived here. And no, I don't know why. But you know what? Even if that miracle hadn't happened, it wouldn't have made a difference. Not here in Silver Grove. We would never have abandoned him like the ones who brought him here did. Reneus has a good heart, and that's all that matters. Whoa there, you gave me a start. Who are you? I don't think I've seen you before. Ark? That's way out there, isn't it? Then you must be very happy to. Hey, Thoris, what are you doing? Oh, Blazes, that's my favorite toy. You, um, you look as if you can run fast. Can you catch Thoris for me and get my teddy back? If you don't, could you? Man, that's really nice of you. has the greatest father in the whole world. Sometimes I'm really jealous.
So, did you found it? Show me. Yes, that's him. Retha and Gages will be so jealous when I tell them that I have a friend like you. You are my friend, aren't you? Questions? Sure. Um, is it? I don't know. Daddy taught me how to read very early, and I just love it. Books are like... Like pictures you can enter whenever you want. When I'm older, I want to write them too. Um, I don't know. I think I'm seven. Yes, that's it. Seven years old. Yeah, I do. They're so beautiful, aren't they? I catch them put them into a jar for a day or two so that I can draw them and then I free them again. Where I'm from? What do you mean? My real father? I don't know what you mean. I was born here, just... A stone? But what would you want with a stone? Hmm. Okay, yes. I think I know which stone you're talking about. And yes, I can show you where it is, but only under one condition. That we make a bargain. That's what you grown-ups call it, isn't it? It's simple. You grant me three wishes and I show you where the stone is. Well, I can ask for three things that you have to do for me. What do you say? Do we have a deal? Awesome, I knew you would say yes. Just come down to the beach in a few minutes. One more time. The left switch makes it go faster. The right one starts it. You got it? Yeah. Thanks, Daddy. You're the best father in the whole world. And you are the best son. But look who came. I will leave you two to it, okay? And remember, don't steer it toward the village. You don't want anyone getting hurt. Have a good time, you two. Hey, that was quick. So, are you ready? It will be a black. <clears throat> okay, actually, it's really simple. Do you know how to shoot a bow? I knew it. So, 
Now look. Ta-da! Isn't it awesome? That's a starling sphere. And he said it's really, really old. Great, isn't it? Well, what do you think? We'll try it out. So, that's my first wish. I want you to try out the sphere with me. Easy. You take the bow over there, and I let the sphere fly free. Ah, and don't start firing before it is open. Otherwise, your arrows will bounce at first. I'll make it fly slowly. But in the second and third, awesome. Don't worry if you do poorly the first time. Ta-da! Isn't it awesome? That's a starling sphere. Daddy found it in the old ruin down by the beach. All right. Let's go. One, two, This is so much fun. I'll make it go faster now. Get ready. One, two, and three. Crazy. Come on, let's see how fast it can go. On my mark. One, two, and go! Sorry, I shouldn't have made it go so fast.